fun one. I'm a fine one to talk about weight, aren't I? Look at the weight I've put on the last couple of years. I've, got, I've reached the age where I'm not only retaining water, I'm leaking it at the same time. <laughs> I'm trying to reduce it. You know, when a man has sex with a woman, he, he can use up to 250 calories. 3,000 if she keeps her tights on. <laughs> but I don't like dieting. We know it's like dieting. We're always looking for quick ways to lose weight. Now the ladies have got this uh, lotion from France. They rub it on the belly and it gets rid of the cellulite. It's meant to reduce the size of your belly, ladies. I thought, I'll try that. And I thought, wait a minute, what if it drips? So I didn't bother. <laughs> My wife's a size now. You should see my wife now. Is she big? I took her to the opera. Nobody would leave until she sang. <laughs> She's tried liposuction. Do you know about that? They suck the fat out of you. They literally suck the fat out of you. Well, she has burnt out two hoovers so far. <laughs> They say you go to the, the liposuction clinic and they, just, they suck the fat out. And they say, it's just like going to the hairdressers. They go, OK, could you take a little off that side, please? And the same amount off that side, please. And could you leave the parting in the middle where it is? <laughs> you know the worst time for putting on weight? You know this. If you're a smoker and you stop smoking, boom, bound to happen. I know my wife smokes. She says it's a hobby, like uh, stamp collecting. Do you buy that? Smoking is a hobby, like stamp collecting? How many stamp collectors do you know wake up first thing in the morning and go, where? Where are those damn stamps? I gotta have a lick now. This album is empty. There's gotta be a 19p commemorative somewhere in this bloody house. I. I don't smoke, but I can help you stop smoking in bed. If you smoke in bed, I can help you stop. All you have to do is two things. Buy a waterbed, fill it with petrol. It, this will work. <laughs> it will work. I have a sister. She's a nymphomaniac slut. Her name is Beryl. She smokes a pipe. I think she does. She says there's nothing like clamping your lips around an old church warden. <laughs> But I think you can give up smoking if you make yourself proud of it. Save the money that you, you don't spend on cigarettes where you can see it. I got a big glass jar. Try this. I put it on the mantelpiece, and all the money that I saved by not buying cigarettes, I put in the glass jar. And I felt proud to see it build up. And then at the end of the month, I would take that money into town and buy cocaine. <laughs> What do you think? We should have more non-smoking zones, maybe. That would be good. The, the French in France, you're not allowed to smoke in public areas. Gosh, I hope this doesn't make the French people hostile and irritable. <laughs> people are suing the tobacco companies for lung infection. Do you know about this? People with emphysema are suing the tobacco companies, and successfully, they're making money. They're making money. I said to my wife, for God's sake, sue Cadbury's for your thighs. <laughs> the women I feel sorry for, I so feel really sorry for you girls who are trying to give it up. So you switch to low tar, low nicotine cigarettes. Oh, come on, that's pathetic. Just because some man has persuaded you it's worth sucking twice as hard to get half as much. <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't mind if I came down and had a slightly closer look. Thank you. Hello. What's your first name? Veronica. Veronica. I'll call you Vera. Leave the knickers off. <laughs> I love your hair. It's so... It's so bouncy. It's so beautiful. May I touch it? It's okay? God, that brings back memories. Do you know... <laughs> what? what is wrong with you people? Pull yourselves together. <laughs> May I say hello? Wouldn't, wouldn't worry. What's your first name? Sally. Sally. Do you know what Sally means? It means purity. The fellow with you looks astounded. It bloody does. <laughs> but doesn't, it's your fault. Did you understand any of my jokes tonight, Sally? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Shame on you, Sally. <laughs> I have a Gideon Bible backstage. I shall take you there after the show. I shall ram the fear of God into you tonight, my child. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing, he says. <laughs> of course, the monkey thought if the elephant's thingy. <laughs> oh, you finally begin to sink in. 
How do you, sir? Lagged your face for the winter and forgot to take it off. <laughs> you mind if I feel it? You sure you don't mind? Because there's no paper in the toilet backstage. <laughs> I'm only kidding, sir. Hello. You look very beautiful. What's your first name? Mardine. Mardine. Morden. Marlene. I got it. Marlene. Mardine. Mardine. <laughs> My the my Maureen. Maureen. Maureen, I finally got it. Maureen, I always wanted to join the Maureens. Now I wish I had. <laughs> Does he call you more for short or not that often these days? <laughs> this is your handbag? Oh, could you turn off your vibrator, please, for me? <laughs> May I say hello? What's your first name? Catherine. Catherine, do you know the meaning of the name? Uh, no. God's child. Literally, God's child. Did you understand any of these naughty jokes? Some of them. Shame on you, child! <laughs> Get me to a nunnery. Better still, come to an old monk house. <laughs> you know, if you stroke an animal, slows down your heartbeat, you live longer, you relax. I have a pussycat. Called Sydney, and I stroke my pussy cat, and I love my pussy cat. They're expensive. Cats are expensive because no, not just cat food. Cat food is not expensive, but veterinary fees are expensive. My vet told me my cat needed cat X-rays. Have you ever run into this? Do you know how much they are? Thirty-five pounds. I mean, I love the cat, but I'm not paying thirty-five pounds for bloody cat X-rays. I'm sorry, I'm not. Put him in a hole, all took him to Heathrow, shoved him through security. There he was. <laughs> We got a dog living with us at the moment, my daughter's dog. She's a, she, she got pregnant, she's allergic to dog hair, we have to look after her dog. She thought it was funny to name the dog after me. The dog is called Bob. The dog is called Bob. My wife is yelling at the dog, very badly trained dog. The neighbors know we haven't got a dog, so they think she's shouting at me. She's going, get your nose out of there, Bob. <laughs> you know you're not allowed on the bed, Bob. Stop drinking out of the toilet, Bob. <laughs> Because he does this dog, he drinks out of the toilet, which <laughs> makes me laugh. Because I'm ticklish down there. <laughs> give you a tip. If you've got a dog, I'll give you a tip. If your dog poos in the house, if the dog does little jobs in the house, here's a tip. Get some elastic bands, mix them in his food. <laughs> Give him his normal dog food, but put elastic bands in it. Then when he poos in the house, wait till it dries, chances are there'll be a little loop. You can pick it up. <laughs> Sling it next door. <laughs> I think dogs are more responsible towards women. They're female. Female dogs are treated better by male dogs than men treat women. Because you know, a man, if they made a little conquest, you know, they'll boast about it. They'll be down the pub telling the lads. You know that, ladies. But you'd never find a dog down on the corner saying, Rex, Rover, come here. <laughs> See that hot bitch over there? I had her uh, last night. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Twelve tits. Twelve tits. <laughs> I had a Rottweiler once. Well, I say a Rottweiler. It was half Rottweiler and half sheepdog. It used to herd things together and kill them. And... <laughs> oh, I miss Fluffy. But my, my brother... My brother has a pit bull. They're terrifying. Pit bull terriers are terrifying. And when they bite people, what do they do? They take them to the vet and castrate them. Excuse me, that's the wrong end. <laughs> Pull their teeth out. If you take the bollocks off, you've nowhere to kick them. <laughs> My brother's pit, he's pit bull terrier comes in the room, Christmas this was. I'm sitting there, innocently, he falls in love with my shin. <laughs> oh, yes, get the, gets the hots for my right leg. Starts having it away with me. He's a pit bull terrier, for Christ's sake. What am I supposed to do? I faked an orgasm. <laughs> 
and dogs. They, the moment you meet a dog, where does it sniff? Where does it sniff? <laughs> Not your foot, is it, or your hand? It's straight in there, isn't it? <laughs> and what do people say when that happens? They go, oh, ha, 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 he's smelling my dog. <laughs> Well, you keep it in a bloody funny place, don't you? <laughs> Why don't you unzip your fly, let him breathe a little bit? <laughs> That's why I don't like big dogs, because big dogs, wherever you are, when big dogs come in the room, they run out of you and they stick their snouts in your crotch and they go... <laughs> and little dogs are worse, because you've got to get right down on the floor to let them do it. <laughs> smarter than us, you know. Dogs, ever notice this? Dogs never, ever tread in dog shit. <laughs> They've got twice as many chances as us, you know. <laughs> this dog of ours goes around, we've got a farm next to us, and he goes around and tries to have it away with the chickens. And the cockerel, doesn't like that, because there's a cockerel in there who clucks defiance. That's distinct from the average solicitor. The cockerel clucks defiance, whereas the average solicitor went on. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't know what a cockerel's got to be so cocky about. I heard on a programme on TV that a cockerel, when he has sex with a hen, takes a quarter of a second. A quarter of a second. You feel better about this man? Yes. <laughs> That's all it takes. He goes, cock a doo 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 and he already cock a doo doo did didn't he? <laughs> a quarter of a second. I don't know how to measure that. Is that a quarter of a second? That's it. That's all it is, isn't it? That's a quarter of a second. What's that like for the hens? They're in the farmyard picking up corn. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some corn over there. What the hell is that? <laughs> you see that? What happened? That's why cockerels walk backwards, they're going, sorry. <laughs> I can't walk away from a beautiful woman or a warm audience. It's such a joy to be with you tonight. Thank you for being here for this video. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your laughter, your applause, your sense of humor. It's Eskimo. <laughs> and my father once rubbed noses with an Eskimo girl and got a serious case of sniffleus. Sniffleus. <laughs> This Eskimo has trouble with his snowmobile. He takes it to a mechanic. The mechanic says, it looks as if you've just blown a seal. And the Eskimo says, no, it's the frost on my moustache gives you that impression. <laughs> King Saud says to Lawrence of Arabia, would you do me a favor? Would you take 12 virgins across the Sahara Desert to a holy retreat on Mount Ararat? He says, yes, of course I will. He said, but they can't ride camels, otherwise they might injure their perfect virginity. They have to go on foot. And they must never look upon a man's nakedness, else they cannot become brides of Allah. And Lawrence of Arabia says, trust me, squire. <laughs> he takes them off across the featureless desert, and he's been two days out when he realizes he's made a horrible mistake. He's bursting for a pee. There's nowhere to pee. It's all right for the virgins. They can squat down. They've got all these robes but he can't even risk the prick of a cactus. <laughs> because there isn't one. Three days out, he is in agony. Cannot pee anywhere. Sees a Bedouin coming the other way. Beckons him over. He says, do you want to earn half a shekel? The Bedouin says, yes, Effendi. He said, well, come a little closer. I don't want those girls to hear. He said, I want you to keep them amused for a few moments. Could you do that? He said, I don't know, Effendi. He said, yes, you could. What I want you to do is say, when they handed out brains, I thought they said trains, and I missed mine. When they handed out noses, I thought they said roses, I asked for a big red one. When they handed out ears, I thought they said beers, I asked for two jugs. When they handed out chins, I thought they said gins, I asked for a double. And when they handed out legs, I thought they said kegs, I asked for two big ones. Can you remember that? He said, no, no. He said, well, repeat it back to me. He said, I'll try. When they handed out brains, I thought they said trains, and I missed one. I handed out noses, I thought they said ro I thought they said roses. You're pissing down my leg, aren't you? <laughs> my brother-in-law, the, brother the leech, 
He's in jail. He was imprisoned for his beliefs. He believed he could wank on the bus. <laughs> And a man in jail with another man always wants to know what he's in for. He says, what are you in for? The other fellow said, uh, well, you know, animal husbandry, you could call it. <laughs> he said, what are you talking about, animal husbandry? What do you mean? What crime have you committed? He said, well, you know, like swan upping, you know. <laughs> he said, you're not telling me that you can sort with God's dumb creatures, are you? God, how low can you get? He said, hamsters. <laughs> Prince Edward, last night in the Marines, his very last night serving in the Marines, Prince Edward was given a wonderful dinner, a marvelous ball. And around about midnight, he left slightly the worse for booze. And he's crossing the parade square in his full dress uniform on a moonless night. When it came over him that he'd had too much to drink, the cold air hit him <coughs> all down the front. All down the front of his beautiful dress uniform, he erpsed. <laughs> Got into his quarters, crashed out. Woke up to the shh, 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 the soft sound of brushing. There was his Batman, brushing the dried herps <laughs> of his uniform tunic. And you go, a man has to be a, a hero to his Batman. He said, oh, my lord, I remember that. Coming back from the function last night, I bumped into a corporal who threw up all over me. We must find out who he is and give him three months confined to barracks. The Batman said, oh, I shall make it six months, your royal highness. Why? He's shit in your trousers as well. <laughs> marvelous, you know, how the world changes. I was looking back at the whole of my life, and I realized the changes are very profound in everybody's life. This happens, but they're curious things happen. Like when I was a young man, even on the, we went on the stage, if you were, used words like I've used tonight, I haven't said the F word, and I won't, because I don't do that on stage. But I do say a word like bloody. Back in the 50s, when you did that in variety, if you said bloody, if you were earning 20 quid a week, suddenly you were earning 19, they find you. They find you. Now today, I can't get over the fact I'm allowed to, a little freedom say all kinds of things, and you like it. It's marvelous. It's honest. You can say things like condom. <laughs> I never knew what that word meant until about five years ago. Did you know what it was? I never knew what it was. A packet of three. I called it a packet of three. <laughs> you always called it a packet of three. It's a packet of three. That's something for the weekend. That's the other phrase. That's something for the weekend. That's a packet of three. Why a packet of three? Who invented the packet of three? Why did... Have you ever known at one single occasion, gentlemen, when you've actually needed three? <laughs> I've sometimes thought I might need two, but not right after I'd used the first one. <laughs> but now, of course, there's no more packet of three. Those Belgian Europrats have ruled that we can't have the English packet of three, the good old British packet of trio. That's gone now. Something for the weekend can't be a packet of three. You know about this? It's got to be a packet of six, a packet of nine, or a packet of 12. Ladies, the packet of six is to accommodate our friends in the European common market from Greece. You know those Greek fellas, they use one packet a week. They say it goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, never on the Sunday. <laughs> the packet of nine, well that, we understand from the French fellas, is what they use once a week. Oh, yes, a packet of nine. Once a week, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday. <laughs> but the packet of 12. Gentlemen, sit tall and proud in your seats here tonight at the lakeside. The packet of 12 was created for the British Mail, yes. For you and me, yes, sir. For the British Mail, the packet of 12. January. <laughs> I'll settle for the packet of four. Spring. <laughs> so it's been great being with you, I tell you that. And we kept it clean. We kept it clean. No difficulty.
Hey, there was no mystery here, my friends. We made history here, my friends. And what made it a sheer delight was keeping it clean tonight. Rob Charles videos, videos for radio training and fun on YouTube. On YouTube.